This river marks the border between Thailand and Burma. I'm on the Thai side because foreign journalists are banned from entering Burma. Capturing scenes from across the river is as near as I can get. I've come here to meet my contacts, brave Burmese who, for the past two months, have been filming secretly for Dateline inside Burma. Burma's about to hold its first election in 20 years. Now the military government says this is the first step towards a guided or disciplined democracy. And opposition groups say this is just legitimizing continued military control. Burma's military government keeps a tight rein on what people watch, read and hear, especially in the run-up to this election. But from a safe house inside Thailand, a team of Burmese journalists gather news from throughout their country and feed it back via satellite. They are the Democratic Voice of Burma, or DVB. For years they've been defying the generals, and despite incredible dangers to their operators inside Burma, they keep broadcasting their bulletins. It's been their camera teams I've used to film secretly inside Burma. Filming without government permission in Burma can lead to 10 years in prison. That includes political gatherings like this, a campaign meeting for the Democratic Party, a small party fielding 50 candidates for the more than 1,500 seats up for grabs. The military wants the world to believe this election will be free and fair, and until now, meetings like this would have been unthinkable in Burma. But party leaders here say they continue to battle tight military control. Cho Cho Nian is the daughter of a former government minister. He and her mother, husband and brother have all served several years in jail for political work. Cho Cho was recently released from seven years in prison. She still believes the election is a small chance for change. ที่ก้องไกลแลเนี่ยเนี่ยตาโยตุ้ยขาเลยล้ําบ่มาแลหลูเรเตเกล่ะเนี่ยเนี่ยทางเนี่ยมาแลเนี่ยเนี่ยจ
Corruption, repression, forced labor, and official abuses are rife. Now the military is using the election to try and change its image. It's formed its own political party, the Union Solidarity and Development Party, or USDP. It's running more than 1,100 candidates across every available seat, many times more than any other party. Many of them are recently retired military officers, men like Rangoon Mayor, former General Ong Tain Lin. In addition to having their own mass party, the army has guaranteed itself key seats and ministries through a new constitution which the generals drafted two years ago. David Matheson is a senior researcher at Human Rights Watch, based in Thailand. The constitution grants the military uh, sweeping powers in terms of uh, assigned ministerial portfolios. Um, they grant uh, the serving military officers 25% of the lower house seats in the national parliament, one third of the seats at, in the upper house, and about 12 to 20% um, in the regional parliaments. There'll be 14 regional parliaments. Um, throughout the country. So out of about 1,500 parliamentary seats that will come out of the elections, um, about 500 of them, four or 500 of them, will be reserved for the military. This is an authoritarian system. Burma is still an authoritarian country. Um, it's illegal to criticise the elections. Um, most of the opposition are either excluded through electoral laws or are in prison. So it's, it's quite an astonishing, sophisticated electoral rigging process um, to ensure the result that the military wants, which is uh, perpetuating the rule. In Burma, our camera teams reach Ong Tain, a noted Rangoon lawyer. The main political prisoner many want released is this woman. Ong Seng Suu Kyi is still under house arrest. In the last election in 1990, her National League for Democracy Party, the NLD, won more than 80% of the vote. The military never allowed them to take power. Instead, Suu Kyi has spent most of the past 20 years under detention. The army's election laws meant Suu Kyi and many party members would have been expelled to allow the NLD to run. At this NLD meeting in March, filmed by DVB, the party decided not to contest the election. Among those at the meeting is 81-year-old U Win Tin, Burma's best-known journalist. Two years ago, he was released from 18 years in prison. Our camera teams found him at home. Despite his long incarceration, he's still prepared to speak out. Democracy 
With virtually no opposition, Burma's military is using the state-controlled airwaves to sell its USDP party. Anyone who criticizes the election or the constitution can be jailed. The military tightly controls all information and decides which parties will get election coverage. But some groups are determined to subvert the army's grip on information. To give people access to independent news, Amnesty International has brought thousands of radios it wants to smuggle across the border. Youth organisation members of the Burmese ethnic Karen minority are taking some of the first radios in. It's a dangerous mission. They have to choose their crossing carefully. Being found with hundreds of radios would lead to arrest and torture. Carrying the sack of radios, their first stop is a camp of several thousand refugees. In these remote parts of Burma, people don't have the cash for luxuries like radios. That night, they get their first chance to hear independent news, or any news, about the election. Dewa too is writing down the news that she'll share with her class and other villagers the next day. A revolt against their strong military rule is what the army fears most. In 2007, thousands of Buddhist monks led an uprising that shook the foundations of military rule. These last moments were filmed by DVB camera teams. The army moved in and opened fire, killing 138 and arresting hundreds more. Monks were among those beaten and killed. Many remain in prison or under surveillance. Secret internal police files have been leaked to DVB, revealing how the military is trying to ensure there's no similar disturbance around the election. The Democratic Voice of Burma says the files show how a large delegation of senior Burmese police officers were sent to China to see how it controls troublesome riots. Depending on the document that uh, we got uh, from the police uh, the some of the senior police officers are getting training in foreign country, especially in China. They are getting training 
especially about uh, how to uh, crack down the uh, demonstrations, uh, especially right police. At the border, I meet Tiha, a contact who can take me to some of those involved in the 07 uprising. Tiha was jailed for political activism, the last six years spent in solitary confinement. But as he explains, the cost was a lot more than his freedom. They sentenced me to death first, but on the 1st of January in 1993, my sentence was commuted to life, 20 years. And I spent my life in prison for 17 years, six months and 16 days total. Do you have a family? Yes, but now my family has, what is, has been broken because when I got arrested, uh, my daughter was just three months, three months old baby. And I, so we didn't, we didn't meet each other. We never met each other till I, I was released. So when I was released, my daughter was just about to be 18. So when she saw me first time in Rangoon, after being released, she told me, I, I accept you. You are my daddy, but I don't know you. Sorry. <laughs> I had passed my childhood with our parents because mom died in 1997 because of you, daddy. <laughs> she, she told me like that. And but I met her five times in Rangoon. Now she's 20. So gradually, I think she understands me gradually. We travel to Um Piem camp, home for 30,000 refugees from Burma, including 50 former political prisoners. Many of these monks were involved in the Saffron Revolution. They escaped after many years in prison. Senior monk U Nyanyet Tara says the monks are still organizing. He said military intelligence is infiltrating the monasteries and arrests continue. He told me a senior monk was just jailed for 15 years for having a laptop and video camera in his monastery. As the election nears, the information war intensifies. Further north on the Thai-Burma border, a team from Amnesty International has flown in to check the progress of their radio project. The next batch of several hundred radios is ready to go in. For Amnesty, this is a dramatic new step from defending human rights to actively intervening in the defence of freedom of speech. We're lobbying at an international level for people to be able to participate in the political process this year, but we wanted to do something that would have an impact on the ground as well. Media censorship was identified as a key issue for people not being able to access their rights. To understand the dangers involved, they review video the Karen took of their journey. So this is you going to buy the radios? Yes, yes. There's so many factors, aren't there, yes. that are involved in you doing this work and yes. KYO. Finally, it gets too dangerous for the couriers to go alone. To get these radios deeper, they have to hand over some of them to armed members of the Karen National Liberation Army. It's a confronting issue for Amnesty. Is there an issue for Amnesty in the fact that you've got at least two armed guys taking them in? Amnesty doesn't endorse the political views of any armed groups operating within Burma. We're working with community-based organisations to get radios into the hands of the people that need them and to do that as safely and as effectively as possible. 
I'll explain to you. In UMPM refugee camp, former political prisoners have gathered to discuss the election. They tell me Thailand's foreign minister has just said that Burmese refugees can be sent back after the election. Thailand has since retracted the statement, but these stateless, unregistered refugees feel vulnerable. I'm afraid of being deported back to Burma because we don't trust, we cannot trust this military government, even if they change democratic government. Yeah, same people. Same people. Yeah. อารมณ์หูไหนงานยีเนี่ยปัดได้อะเจนนารีกาอ๋อมาอะลุงเลี้ยทั่วโลกโลกไม่เอาอ่ะซาบอกยีซากาเลยโอ้มาตัวตามา